Um, go, go. <laughs> Welcome to Movie the Podcast. Ooh. That's right, Movie the Podcast, brought to you by Madam Web. That's right, Madam Web in theaters right now. Find out about spiders uh, I, and I mean, all of their connections in the new psychological thriller by Marvel, Madam Web. You know, I can't wait to see that movie. I know. Me too. <laughs> Well, because like I, I don't know, it's gonna like I, like I don't think I've ever seen a movie that was so decisively negative against it from everybody. Like yeah, people there's, not, there's no chance. Every, everybody hates it. Like people who are usually like, well, people don't like it because it's a movie about all about with like women protagonists and stuff. They're like, no, this sucks. No, this is terrible. No. Like and this thing with. This shouldn't have been made. It doesn't matter who's in it. It's awful. Yeah. But when you when you accept responsibility, <laughs> you get great abilities. I believe yeah. is the, the um, remix of the line. And I I the reason I want to see it is a is the your movie sucks review that I watched yesterday. He's like it's bad on like every conceivable level. Like on a technical level, he's like the editing is fucking weird. The shot compositions don't make any sense. I'm like ooh okay. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's one thing to be a bad, boring movie with a boring script, kind of like Morbius. Because, like, Morbius was terrible, but, like, it wasn't, like, incompetent, like, in how it was produced, I, I wouldn't think. Or I don't has think. The, has the, this has is the, apparently is. Has the greater Spider-Man universe been, like, bastardized worse than any other one as far as, like, Venom's... And I mean, Madam well, Web to, and well, Morbius. the funny thing is, is that the Venom ones are the only ones that are any good. Like I know that, like to be, to be fair, there's not that many universes. True. Like in the sense of, because Marvel started the universe thing. Like Star Wars started yeah. doing it after Marvel. Everybody, and, like these, yeah. like it's hard to compare. But I mean, like, like I'm looking, like I'm, like I'm sort of thinking, like, there's like almost like a big three. There's like, I, I mean, the even X-Men, within Marvel, there's like X Men, the Spider, bad. yeah, X Men. There's there's Avengers universe, X Men universe, and Spider Man are sort of like the three I'm thinking of. Well, really, X Men was the one that or Spider Man started it all. Spider Man's original yeah. uh, original uh, trilogy. But did, man, did that come like, out before the Brian Singer? Is it Brian Singer X Men? Yeah, I think X Men. Yeah. The first X Men might have come out right before Spider Man. But like when you compare Spider Man versus X Men, there's no contest. That first X Men movie sucks now. Yeah, it is back not then, held up like, at all. Back that, then, yeah, like, back then it was amazing. I was blown away. Oh yeah, I was Whereas like, oh I my think, god, this is so cool. I think Spider Man one and two still hold up. Like they're still good movies. Like they're Spider-Man, they're kind of Spider-Man two definitely. Two is, Yes, but I, I think even excellent. I think even one holds up. Like it's kind of hokey, but it's I think it's true. It holds up except for that like that terrible that's goblin super, costume. Yeah, that's that they cool. had that other like oh I know that other thing that looks so hard. good. That like prosthetic that like yeah. it looks so, the most incredible so good. I yeah. really I really hope that this movie that Madam Web, if nothing else, gets us. More of these other Spider Woman characters, though, because like the costume designs for all of them look they look pretty tremendous. Good. Yeah. Julia Carpenter Spider Woman, and then I think it's Aranya, and Aranya. Uh, is a Mayday is it... Parker is the third one. Oh, like that's this costume... the third one was. Maybe, I, I didn't uh, know. maybe not, but man, I don't those, know. Uh, those costume designs look tremendous, especially the Julia Carpenter one. The Julia Carpenter like, one that's really good. That's yeah. awesome, and I've always liked Aranya. I've always thought that was a cool. Yeah, me too. A cool character. Um, I like the uh, I like the silk suit, but she's not in any of these movies yet. Oh I yeah, that's silk. Yeah, that's a that's a cool character. But like Adam Scott in this movie plays Ben Parker. Yeah. Right. Uh, and, and apparently, like, apparently the stinger is like he has a kid at the end. But, but it's his that's sister's not, kid, right? It's his. But, it's that's yes, But Ben yes, Ben yeah. Parker is Uncle Ben. Like, it just yeah. doesn't make any sense. But well, they, they have, they have doing something way else with it. It's like, his sister. It's his. It's she's giving birth to Peter, but it's his sister, not his kid, right? Oh, the little stinger thing that I saw made it look like like he's like in the room with her while she's giving birth. Well, like, because no, because Peter's dad. I, I watched a whole review about this. Like Peter's dad has been out of town for the duration of the movie. So Ben is acting as the surrogate dad, but it's his sister's kid, Mary. Well, that's that's accurate then. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, 
But apparently, some other reviewer, some other reviewer, I guess, either missed the mark or didn't understand, whatever. They were like, and at the end, Ben Parker's there for the birth of his son, Peter Parker. I was like, that's not how uncles work, but that's <laughs> yeah. fine. But apparently, um, uh, I forget which actress it is, but she plays uh, Spider uh, Peter Parker's mom. And they, like, constantly are, like, they make, like, little nods to, like, Peter being bored. And it's like, who who is asking for this? Also, hot take, the, uh, I mean, Madam Web's been around since, like, the 70s. But, like, the other character, the bad guy in this is that Ezekiel, I can't remember his last name. Alec, I don't remember. It's from the, oh, yeah, the last name. It's from the, the Jan Michael Straczynski run. It's one of the stupidest, fu- the spider totem and all that bullshit. It's, like. I, that, I, love, I don't know. I, I, I kind of I kinda lo- I kinda love that run for how dumb it is. I mean, I and like, like some it. tried to retcon him and Spider-Man basically into, like, a god of sorts. Yeah, it was A spider dumb. god. But and also, then, like, and then... Morlun, Morlun was awesome. Yeah. But then they did that cool. story, and then they immediately... Or, no, it was... That's the other. <laughs> or they had the Ezekiel thing, and then they did the other... Then they did where, Sins Past, where which was, they were so the same exact the same exact outcome as like the other. Yeah, uh, the of uh, the other. We're still waiting to see who the other was. By the way, they never revealed who the other was. I, I'm the other was a, cool, on that one. was a cool story. Like Moreland, like destroyed him pretty much. Yeah. Uh, no resolution. Screw you, Jan Michael Straczynski. You suck. I mean, you had some good comics, but you're kind of annoying too. And I think I you're like Jan Michael too. Vincent. I think you're super uh-huh. conservative too, so you know, fuck you. Um, but anyway, so yeah, that's your Spider-Man minute. I, I mean, as soon as, uh, as soon as a version of that movie becomes available to stream, I will, we will review it on. The it show. might be, it might be available to stream by the end of this sentence because it's not doing very well. Also, uh, hilariously, I didn't realize this until one of the reviewers pointed it out. That Craven movie was supposed to already be out, and like, I guess they shelved it. Because it was supposed to be out in August, and I was like, "Oh, wow. shit. I didn't know that." <laughs> it's like, are oh, they God. done principal photography? Are they like, Dude, it's done? It is it's done. In the camp? Done. Oh yeah, oh. it was supposed to be out last last <laughs> August, dude. They originally. I, I mean, I guess it. are they in reshoots? Are they? I ha- who knows? Are I they mean, just sitting on it, waiting for see how bad the the Spider Verse tanks? I mean, the funny They're... thing is, right? Like on paper, it's such a, like nobody thought these were good ideas. Like. People like Spider-Man and, like, spider characters, at least, like, like Alex said before, like, if this movie was about, like, like, the spider women or whatever, for lack of a better term, I know they're not, like, teamed up in the comics, but, like, that's an idea. That's something, right? Like, people like spider powers and stuff, but, like, to have it about, like, a character like Madam Web that no one knows about, nobody gives a shit about, like, such a, just, I remember when they first announced it, I was like, the fuck, like, Madam Web? Like, it's such a yeah. weird... It's just bad from the start, you know? Yeah, I know nothing about that character. I didn't know she existed until the trailer dropped. I barely, I barely know anything about her. I, I think she was yeah. more even... I think she was even more involved in the Spider-Man cartoon yeah, she was than, in the, than the comic books. Like, oh, oh, yeah. She was barely in the comic books. She was involved in that Ezekiel storyline, though. That's more or less where I know her from. She was involved in that, but she and she was also involved in the cartoon. Uh, but anyway, God, we uh, we even talk about we. Uh, it's a double feature tonight, folks. Double up. Um, one of the strangest double features you will ever see. Yeah, real banger. <laughs> this is no, not like, anti banger. If, if you were programming a theater show, this would not be uh, not be one to do. It's a very yeah. odd choice. Um, yeah, this is like this is this is like vince mcmahon level bad planning like this is so, just <laughs> well <laughs> um so so the first pick was uh Go- a gogs pick and i i would go on the record and say one of the strangest gogs picks i never expected you to pick this movie um well, I wanted, movie I've, I've seen a bunch oh and by the way sean is coming he's just running late um but yeah um when you said it i was intrigued i was like this is this is going to be I was kind of worried because I know Sean doesn't really like the movie. So I was like, oh, this is going to be a goddamn 3v1 on me. But uh, I was interested to see how it would turn out. I, I, I'm always, uh, it, you know, when you go against hype, you know, that's, that, and it is always fascinating to me. So, well, I, I wanted I'm, to pick, I wanted to pick a Gary Oldman movie that I hadn't seen. Mm-hmm. It's young Gary Oldman. It's his first starring role. This yeah. And I've never, and I've role. never, I've always, 
I've always heard of the movie, right? I've always yeah. I've been aware of it, but I've, and I don't follow punk. I don't know. So I was kind of coming into this thing blind. But we watched Sid and Nancy. I don't think we ever even said that. We yeah, we watched Sid and Nancy. And but then, then also, there was some there were some crossed wires because yeah. it's also Alex's birthday pick month, and he picked yep. Jason Statham's The Beekeeper. Yeah, uh, which is a Kurt Wimmer fucking David Ayer movie. David Ayer's double Hey, up. Sean's here. You didn't even you haven't even missed anything, Sean. We yeah, haven't just even missed, started missed talking the Spider about Spider Minute. We talked about we talked about Spider Man for fifteen minutes. Oh, is he there? He, he popped up. His mic is muted. Oh, unmute, anyhow. unmute your mic, Boomer. It's like this is like a, a team meeting at work. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> hey, there we Please go. turn the machine up. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we watched yeah. the Beekeeper and Sid and Nancy. Yeah, the Beekeeper and Sid and Nancy. A very, like I said before, a very odd special feature. Uh, Alec, it's your birthday. You said do Sid and Nancy first, right? You said to get that one out of the way. I feel like we'll have more to talk about with the beekeeper anyway. Yeah. Yeah, get Sid and Nancy. Sid and Nancy's pretty A to B. We're not gonna do, we're not gonna do, uh. Go for it. Okay, yeah. We're not gonna do, uh, what did we watch this week? Because we gotta get through two movies, so we'll save them. Nice. Uh, anyway, Gogs, what happened in Sid and Nancy? Well, you don't have to go beat for beat, because it's very. I'm not gonna. It's, it's uh, very. It's, it's, it's a straightforward straightforward movie. It is. Uh, a sadder version of uh, Train Spotting. Uh, you're introduced to the titular <laughs> Sid, <Wow. laughs> and uh, with a more realistic version of Sid Spotting. is a member of the Sexual Pistols. Uh, him and like Johnny Rotten, and I can't believe parents would name their children these things, but it's England, and you know, no. <laughs> Um, I, I'm so, so embarrassed that I know <laughs> their real name. Like it's oh, like, yeah. I, there's so, there's so much like you should be. Well, I, I I'll just say this now. Like I can't even call him by his yeah. his stage name. I always just call him your your man John Lydon. Yeah, well, I think one oh, of one of the Gordon. one of the things that I I personally liked about this movie a lot, and it's it, it's it's a weird decision. But like if you don't know a lot about the Sex Pistols, I feel like you're gonna kind of be lost in like a lot like because they don't really introduce any of the characters. Like I mean, you can figure out their affiliations based on their interactions. Well, they're like, on stage together, so you kind of get that much. Well, I mean, like the side characters, like their manager and yeah. Malcolm McDowell, and or not Mal- Malcolm, not Malcolm McDowell. Uh, shit, what's his fucking name, Sean? Malcolm Gladwell. Roddy, Roddy McDowell. No, no, not Malcolm Gladwell. That's the writer. It's Malcolm McLaren. Michael McLaren. Yeah, Malcolm McLaren. He's in the movie, and he's in front of his sex shop, which is like re- that's a real thing. Like that, that like he was a, a like that's what he did. He was like a. And like a lot of the other like side characters, like if they're all those are all real people, and like it, I don't know. Again, like as someone real that people. has watched a lot of documentaries about not specifically the Sex Pistols, but like just that era of punk rock, I thought it was I thought it was interesting because, and I'm going to say this throughout my review of this movie, but like I, I'm so conditioned to like the fucking walk hard biopic that we've gotten over the last like 30 years. Mm-hmm. And, like not Walk Hard specifically because I love that movie. I mean, like the one the the movies that Rock that uh, Walk Hard was parodying. Right. I thought this movie was really interesting because it was like the antithesis of all that. Like it was just like here they are, this is the movie, and you're stuck with these terrible, terrible people. Yeah, yeah. I, I was kind of blown away because just we'll talk about the movie in a minute, but like. Sure. It's I mean, like, again, I didn't like, realize, plot wise, like, plot wise, there's not a ton to talk about. There's not I mean, no. So here's so here's eight, the plot. Th- we'll do the yeah. plot real fast. The uh, Sex Pistols are sex pistoling, and uh, they end up just being dicks in in London. Uh, and then they come across the sister from Twins, and her name is Nancy, and she is from America, and she wants to bang punkers, uh, and she also wants to do heroin. And she succeeds in both of her tasks, vision board. She, ma- she believed it. She made it happen. Um, She's a real Karen page. Yeah, so she she madam webbed her way through this thing, and then uh, she got uh, the Sex Pistols, I guess, in their very tight window, which is one of the things that blew me away. They're really only for they a name one of a album. band that I know they, they were really operating album, yeah. for like two years, a year and a half, yeah. whatever. If, yeah, barely two years at that. They, so, I mean, and they, they are incredibly overrated. I mean, they're like important, oh, yeah. but as a band, are they? they are not very good. Oh, they're yeah. absolutely important to the yeah. history right. of like well, rock and roll music in general. But 
No, Sean's right. They are overrated, but like they're like that. I mean, the thing is, is that they are, even though they were manufactured, they're part of a catalyst of a bigger movement beyond. Are they the them. who's the original punk band? Is it them? The or is it- well, I mean, are we going to get into this conversation? The 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 seventy. If you want to talk about seventies punk, it's the Ramones. The Ramones are okay. pretty much the origin. If you want to get to like. Before that, it's like the New York Dolls and the Stooges right. and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and then but, you can go like, well, Buddy Holly I invented the power the chord structure, and like, yeah, you can get like on a real a fucking. Simple note would have basically, sufficed. Basically, people generally look at it. The Ramones got huge, and then ain't like uh, that guy I was just talking about. Um, he wanted his own punk band for England. And he basically put out an ad in the paper <laughs> to make like a punk pistols, band. Like yeah. they did in sync. They're a boy band yeah. that was put together by a pervert shop. Yeah, basically. Yeah, that's a, that's okay. exactly what they are. Now they are all genuinely like awful, like shitty like, street pawns. Oh, they, they seem to be real pieces of shit. Like they weren't. Yeah, they, they didn't manufacture their pieces of shittiness. No, I mean it's like they were they were definitely put together and and manufactured, but like their personalities were that their own. Now. I, I think it's genuine easy. pieces of shit. Well, it's pretty easy to say that, like, they were kids. Like, they were, like... I think, oh, they were full. They were eight, 18. I mean, uh, Sid Vicious died. I think he was 21. Like... Yeah. I mean, the thing is, like, they were kids, and they, you know, obviously, it, they leaned into it. You know what I mean? Like, they were shitty, but then you give them money and fame, they're just going to keep getting worse. I don't know but if they anyway. got much money, honestly, because the whole... Here's the movie. Sid and Nancy are all the time trying to score heroin and get money any which way they can. Well, those damn two people that doing whatever. Do. I mean, yeah, but yeah, but so, they're junks. I mean, Sid Vicious is like famously well, junkies don't usually keep money very long. Hey, I don't know what to tell you. So then they uh, they're scamming. Then there's a big then then Sid gets you know there's a lot of tension between the band. They're throwing darts at each other and whatnot. Uh, then uh, the the Sex Pistols get the chance to go on an American tour, and they're like, I don't know if I can do this without Nancy, and then. They go there without Nancy, and he's a sad boy, a sadder boy somehow. Uh, and then they come back, and everybody's fucked up, and the band breaks up, and then Sid's like, I'm going to do this on my own. And so him and Nancy go back to America, and they crash at some grandparents' house, and they're just appalled at what's happening. That, that's my and, favorite scene in the whole movie. When they go back yeah, to they, they just banish them to the house, hotel please. or whatever. That scene is so fucking like I don't know I I I I think one of the things that I like the most about this movie is the weird almost surrealness of a lot of the scenes and I think like it's just how Alex Cox is like when they I was talking to Sean like when they're when they show just the streets of London there's always like kids just like smashing shit and it just seems like absolute chaos in the streets like it's almost like post apocalyptic yeah it's got a Clockwork go to, Orange kind of vibe yeah like, very much exactly. so. Like, and then when you go shook down and like when you go to Nancy's house, it's so fucking weird. And they're like the weirdest like people from it's like fucking, Pennsylvania. It's like fucking Eraserhead. Like yeah, it's, it's like it's David really Lynch is. directed that scene. Yeah, it is. Yeah, great. It's, I, and fucking my, Sid's all fucked up, no shirt on. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, it's the best scene in the movie. Like, I yeah, think and I don't even think it's close. Like, I think my big problem with the movie and this might just be me and probably TJ a little bit is that, like, so much of the first half of the movie is basically just a Sex Pistols biopic, and the performance by the guy playing John Lydon is so fucking bad. Like, he's really bad. He sounds nothing like him. And when they got to do the songs, like, that bothers me. And it's like, I already know all this shit. But then, I'll, I'll put it this way, I think the second half of the movie is, like, almost a masterpiece. Like, I love the second half of the movie. Which is not a stance I had before, but the first half of the movie I feel like is a total drag. Like, like the like the downfall half where they're just like trying to score, and then they had, oh I forgot how to say on the movie open. The movie opens with uh, a murder or a death, and then the rest of the movie is shot. They Tarantino it and run it back. Um, so yeah, they fall from grace. They're trying to score. Nancy's trying to get Sid solo gigs. He sucks on ice. Um, they're just living in abject squalor. They made a suicide pact. Sid tries to get out of it or tries to get out of the relationship. Nancy freaks out on him. Uh, they they tussle and she gets like stabbed in the gut, and then they make out or make up one of the two and fall asleep on the bed. Then she wakes up the next morning bleeding out, and it's horrific. That uh, that and sequence, then, 
I that I is really like horrific. Well, I I mean, and you know, obviously nobody exactly knows what happens. The the actual account from a lot of people, they he took a lot of liberties with with what really happened. Uh, but I liked how that was written. Like I because it seemed like plausible because they're both fucked up and they're yeah. Pretty, you and you see the knife, right? Like you see the knife, like in early his hand, in the scene, and you don't really, I, you don't see her get directly stabbed at first, and it's just like they're both so fucked up, they have no idea what's going on, and it's just like I don't know, I, I thought that was like really well done, and well, then when she, I mean, I, like, you see, you sort, I mean, you see the stabbing, in as much as you see his you hand with how, the knife, you don't see how bad thrust into her stomach, yeah. But you know, I mean, like they just they they don't dwell on it. I guess no, 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 no. They they, they no sell it honestly. And then the next morning, she wakes up just covered in like it looks like the scene in The Godfather. Like the bed is full of blood. Yeah, she's covered in blood. She goes in the bathroom, passes. It's fucking off. It's awful. Yeah. It's um. And then and the again, movie. And then there's... Sid. He kind of gets. I guess. If I remember correctly, he kind of gets off. Like they kind of release him on his own recognizance, which, which is, which is true. Which actually happened. Uh, he and, was bailed out uh, allegedly by Mick Jagger. Mick Jagger bailed him out. And what the movie the movie takes this is probably the most liberties the movie takes because what happened is he gets bailed out. He ends up in real life. He ends up. Um, he he's only he's only alive for like I think like six months after this. But he ends up ODing. I mean, yeah, I think they yeah. say at the end of the movie that he ODs. He did. Yeah, like, yeah, OD'd on heroin. The, the movie ends on this kind of weird surrealist kind of thing where he goes to like a pizza place, and then Nancy pulls up in a in a taxi in a white and dress in the cab, and like it's like it's like he's being taken home as he's dying, right? He's literally like, like driving to heaven, right, or, right. or whatever. And I don't so, know, like I I I I really, I mean, there's just. I th- I think Alex Cox is really interesting as a filmmaker, and like I think like his his sensibilities are such where I like really identify with like a lot of like the weird choices he makes, and I think it keeps it keeps a movie that's like very plot light. I think it keeps it interesting, and I I don't know like I like it a lot. Now I was saying before I read an interview with him uh, that came out a few years ago, and I thought it was fascinating, and I guess I'll bring it up now. But he, see, so I don't know how you felt about the movie, but I felt like it, I didn't feel like it was glorifying Sid and Nancy. Oh, if anything, not at it, all. I think it's like warts and all of how terrible they're fucking. These are supposed to be like, you know, or at least Sid, Sid is like this big time rock star, right? But he lives this like trash life and he's a fucking disaster. Everybody around him can see that he's going to die. Like he and everyone. The other thing that I think the, the movie does a good job of, without like fucking putting it in your face, is that everyone is like everyone that could is taking advantage of him. There's that great scene where I think they're they're at dinner or something outside, and this fucking sleazy like promoter guy is like, "Hey, we should do something." And Sid's so fucked up, he like throws up in himself, and he's just like, "Just call me, call." You know what I mean? Like, yeah, 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 no, it's I, it's I love bad. that shit. And well, anyway, my my point is is that. Watching the movie, I, I personally saw the intent that he wanted to, vi- like, vilify uh, Sid Nancy. He said that the most important scene in that whole movie is when they go to get clean. And that guy, that before they gives him the uh, the methadone, I think it is, or, or some toxin, what, whatever that it shit is to get you off of the heroin, um, he, like, goes into that whole rant. And apparently that scene was apparently much longer in the original version of the movie, but it got cut down. And the only reason that he had the taxi cab scene at the end is because he co-wrote it with somebody and mm-hmm. the co-writer was very, very um precious about that ending. And he wasn't in love with it because he felt like the ending kind of, it almost, it the almost validates of the it, right? Yeah. Like, and like... I, it's funny because I never thought about that before until he said it. And I was like, that's pretty interesting. I never really, he's like, if I had to do it over again, I wouldn't shoot the ending that way. I was yeah, like, it's, like a, it's like a strangely, it's sad, but it's like a strangely happy ending for, like, such a fucking terrible story. Well, it's also, like, Alex Cox can't, like, make a straight movie, you know what I mean? There has to be some right. kind of weirdness to it. It kind of ends the way Repo Man ends. It does, actually. <laughs> yeah. Ascending into heaven or whatever they did in their fucking Ford Fairlane. Um, but, yeah, it's... um. 
I don't know. It's like, uh, I'll say this. Uh, Gary Oldman's great in it. Like, oh, this is, this is a uh, fun piece of trivia. So, Gary, this, so this uh, role was originally up for two people for their first, uh, like, their first uh, featured, like, major performance. <laughs> Gary Oldman and Tay Diggs. Nice. Gary, Oldman, G- Gary Oldman and guess the next one. It's a very – Henry Cavill. Very, no, 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 no. Not too, too young. A very prolific actor that's like synonymous with like Oscar winning performances. Uh, um, uh G- not Jeremy Irons. Um, Ra- I Ray Fiennes. Said Jeremy Irons. Who's the three name banger? That's, that's a good uh, one. Uh, I think you're on to it, Gogs. Go ahead. There will be blood. Um, yeah, it's Daniel Day Lewis. That yeah, is Day-Lewis. the other one. So he, really? Alex Cox was going to either cast Gary Oldman or Daniel Day Lewis, which is like, and both of them had never been in a, a starring role, which is blows your mind. This was before um, Last of the Mohicans, I guess. I must oh yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, but but I I really like this. I think Gary Oldman is stellar in this fucking movie. Like if you've ever seen footage of Sid Vicious, he's he's exactly him. Like it's it's perfect. And the actress that plays Nancy, I mean, it's funny because like Nancy's like super annoying and like annoying chunky <laughs> like girlfriend, but. Like watch interviews where she's in it. She it's exact like it's spot on. Like it's not, it's not even like it, it's one to one. It's pretty wild. Yeah, I don't know any like like I said my my knowledge of the Sex Pistols, the whole British punk scene is like nothing. So I got no yeah. I I frame find of reference. That, I find that shit just endlessly fascinating. I I just anything any kind of scene like the big rock scenes. I always. I think that that shit's just endlessly fascinating to me. But yeah, it's so it's uh, it's funny. It's interesting you bring up the thing about how the guy thought that that ending was so precious because it does seem like it's like justifying it or giving them like a I don't know like it all worked out like but it really didn't. No, um, and I mean it's it's bittersweet, but I mean it's funny because again I I've seen this several times before. I never took it that way. I guess because the rest of the movie is so dark, I never took it at that. But it's it's interesting because he says like so many people did, and I was like, oh, it's interesting. Yeah, it felt it felt um, very odd. Oh, and I, I didn't talk about the one scene. I forget what brought it on, but the scene where he's basically having like, what's the impetus for this? I, I forget because it's been a minute since I watched it. But where he's in that theater and then the, he pulls out a pistol on the stage. Oh, that's, it, that, that's real. It actually happened. That, that it's actually a music happened. video. Yeah. Uh, the, the, okay. Yeah. Even the gun and everything. It's it's real. That's a oh. you can it, it go, when you get off the show, guys. Go to YouTube and put like, Sid Vicious get off my way, and it's that's real. That's like a real. They they reenacted it perfectly. Like oh, interesting. Yeah. And I, and I know you love that song. You, you're big. Sound. I do love that song. Yeah. It's, it's a banger. Um, and I, uh, I, I appreciate Sid Vicious because he taught me that, like, you don't have to play bass to play bass. <laughs> like, you, have to, you don't have to have any idea how to play bass to just have a bunch of basses. Uh, Sean, uh, what do you think, buddy? Uh, like I said, like, I, from the, the Sex Pistols biopic part, not interesting almost at all. And, like, I thought the second half of the movie where it's just the movie about their relationship, basically, and how fucked up it is and how damaged they are, I found really, really compelling. Her just shrieking the whole movie, like, I can see why that would put people off, but, I I mean, it's very informative. It was very uncomfortable for me. It is, and I think that's intentional. Like, you're not supposed to be comfortable with what you're looking at, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think, like, again, like, it's that... I don't think you, I don't understand how you can watch this movie and be like, man, doing heroin's awesome. Cause it, it right. looks fucking, it looks like hell. I mean, there's the one scene where they literally set their room on fire and they're just like, yeah, whatever. Like they're so, yeah, they just drop up. a cigarette and just a pile of rubbish and they just watch it. Also, I felt so bad for that cat. It was like, oh my, that poor cat. I hope that cat got out of there. But, uh, Wait, all right. Go ahead. It's interesting you bring that up too. Cause it's funny. Cause like, that scene, like, once again, like, people just trying to use them. Like, the guy who owned the hotel wasn't even like, get the fuck out of here. No, he's he like, still stay in my hotel, room. but here's another room. He just moved them to a different room. Well, yeah, because that, but that's just it, right? Like, even though right, they're he wants like, just them to be there. Up he wants junkies, them. he's still a celebrity, so that carries right. some kind of weight, which is ridiculous. 
But uh all right, let's give uh our five knuckle shuffles for this one. All right. Right on time, seven thirty, <laughs> perfect. Uh Sean. Uh seven. Repo man seven. You have a good old repo seven. Yeah, no, like I, I said it already twice, but like I I just don't think the the music part is compelling at all. Maybe if I didn't know anything about it, it would be more interesting, but like I already know too much about it, so it's just kind of, it feels redundant to me. You know, that's not yeah. the movie's fault. That's a subjective thing. But no, I thought the the two leads are fantastic. It might be one of the best two handers I've seen in a long time. Yeah, uh, I, I, you're absolutely right on that one. I can't str- I mean, I feel like their performances are the the whole movie. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I, yeah, I mean, incredible. Oh, uh, Alec. Uh, didn't watch it. Five. Five. <laughs> well, yeah, well, it's fair. <laughs> it's forgettable, so. Uh, TJ. Uh, I, uh, I'm gonna give this an, an eight, bordering on a nine. I really like this movie. I've seen this movie a bunch. Uh, again, I'm a sucker for the time period. I'm a sucker for, I'm a sucker for just like rock and roll history in general. Like, I just love it. And, um, Again, I really, I feel like just because I'm so, I feel like biopics are so, like, sanitized and boring now. Like, I mean, they made, a, that. I watched that Queen movie and they barely talked about Freddie Mercury being gay. And it's just like, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> like, what, was like, gay? Yeah, exactly. I mean, like, I just feel like, uh, and you know, there's a, a Michael Jackson biopic coming out. And it's like, oh, my God. Oh, boy. And I, I can't, I, I can't bear to, I mean, I don't really give a shit about Bob Marley, but I can't wait to see how they fucking, they, they fucking soften all his political views because I can see that coming. But I just, I feel like I love the fact that this movie is just so like raw and gross and just like, again, I really liked how, and, and it's funny in that interview also, he, Alex Cox said that if he did it again, like whenever you see like the 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 punk performances, he's like, that's not accurate. He's like, those he, they played in like empty halls and like nobody really cared. And he's like, he's like, I wanted to make it like shit that I had seen on like TV and stuff like that that was already hyping it up. But if he wanted to make it more realistic, it wouldn't have been like that. But I kind of see, I kind of understand what he was going for when he made it. You know what I mean? Like I don't think I don't. It's interesting that he uses terms like realism because I don't think he goes for realism in like anything besides like emotional realism, if that makes any sense. Like, I feel like he always puts like surrealist and exaggerated elements in his films. And I think that's what makes it work. But I, I think this movie is great. I, it's a very, it's a very TJ movie because it's like very depressing. It's about. It's about a guy that plays bass. I love that. I mean, it's like this should have been a double feature. This is like evil Scott Pilgrim, you know? <laughs> like, mm. <laughs> uh, Gogs. Uh, I'm also going to give it a seven. Um, it's fair. Like, I guess Sean said if he didn't, he, well, he said he knew, he knew too much about the Sex Pistols to appreciate the musical part of it. I knew nothing about him, and I still didn't appreciate that, so if that helps you. Um, the... The the second half is the very is very interesting, but it is very sad, and I I might have enjoyed it more if I, like I don't know I don't think I was in a good headspace to his emotions have been driving a lot of his movie reviews lately, and uh, I wasn't in, like it just it didn't like I didn't want to be sad uh, during it, but I did appreciate the performances. Uh, Gary Oldman's great in it. I should have learned the young lady's name who played Nancy. I can't think of it um I forgot her name so that's because we're she, misogynistic yeah um but you know she she's great in it the the dad da- it, it did it's remind me of train spotting but somehow sadder um and it's you know it's i guess the plight uh, of the british junkie nancy, is always gonna nancy be was played by chloe webb well and uh what did she did she do anything else besides twins that of any oh, she's in a ton of movies um oh, God. Yeah, but no, she's in a ton of movies. She's in a bunch of uh, Peter Greenaway movies that I don't think you've ever seen. They're British, like Belly the Architect and some other stuff. But she was in um, she she had a pretty big career. Uh, of course, my fucking phone doesn't want to work. Oh, but sorry. uh, she was in Ghostbusters too. She played Elaine in Ghostbusters too. Wait. Oh 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 yeah. 
she's she's still active. Like she's in she's still like she's in a lot of TV stuff now, but she's she's still active. She's um she still works, so good for her. Oh. Well, yeah. So that was Sid and Nancy. Yeah, interesting pick, guys. Very interesting pick. Well, thank you. Uh, all right, yeah. now we get to talk about a beekeeper that uh, that all four of us oh, watched. Boy. This fucking movie. I uh, I can't wait to talk about this fucking movie. I this you know we talk about this all the time. This without a doubt is a movie that I wish we could have all watched together. Because I was oh I, we would have been howling because howling. this movie is yeah. the virus would have definitely <laughs> buried. Bro, yeah. I I. Was, like, I took I took an edible before I watched this, and I was dying watching. I could not stop fucking laughing at this fucking movie. Like I loved it so much, but it is the it. one of the dumbest movies I think I've seen. Oh, but it's, in a it's, very it's, long oh, time. A, I don't want to bury it, the lead, but this is probably the worst script ever written. Like, <laughs> it's, it's, like it dialogue like, wise, yeah, and it's and a Kurt Wimmer, it's a Kurt Wimmer script. Like that says something. Oh, but it's so it's so deliciously terrible. Like, like oh I was God. telling TJ, I don't know if this tracks with everybody, but uh, hopefully it does. It feels like an I- image comics from that lost era yeah. of like the mid two thousands, where it ran for three issues and got canceled because nobody read it. Yeah, like blood strike or <laughs> yeah, like it, it feels like like a bad like I like Andy Willingham. Who's the guy that wrote the Losers or like something oh, like that? It's oh, like oh uh, shit, how did I forget that? Yeah, I can't think of his name right now. But who's running losers... this illegal phone room? It's the president. <laughs> like what, what the, the fuck, fuck are we even doing? Fun, like oh my god. I anyway. I, I if you ever want to feel. If you ever want to feel like you know the the life doesn't isn't fair and and you, you want to be you know you want to be reassured that you, that it is that you're correct that it's not fair. Kurt Wimmer's career is that like that guy is lives a very comfortable life. He's never made anything worth his shit. <laughs> What's his best movie? I know he made the piece of shit Point Break remake. Equilibrium. Equilibrium. Oh yeah, this is his best, best movie. movie. Yeah. Also, Ugh. he wrote he wrote the Thomas Crown Affair. That doesn't seem right. I feel like that was a good movie. Maybe he wrote the title. He wrote Sphere, which I think is a good book. No, it's title. a Michael Crichton book. Well, he wrote the script. Well, that's just rewriting a book. I mean, anyone could okay. do that. I could do that. Ultraviolet, The Equilibrium, The Recruit, Ultraviolet, Street Kings, Law-Abiding Citizens. Street oh, Kings. Jesus uh, Christ. Salt. Remember that? The Angelina Jolie movie? Uh, I got a, I got a, I got a soft spot in my heart for Law Abiding Citizen. I'm not gonna the, lie to you. I know total, it's bad. The Total Recall remake, which was awful. Mm. Uh, Point Break, of course. Ugh. A Children of the Corn remake that I don't remember at all. That's the one I watched last year. Oh, you watched that? I don't remember. Yeah, it was on my it was on my bottom five. Uh, a movie called Spell I've never heard of. A movie called The Misfits I've never heard of. Expend Forbles, the the new exp- the last Expendables movie he wrote. Oh, the Misfits was that comic book one that like, sh- or was that the Losers? No. That shitty one that like the Losers. Had, uh, what's her name? No, Gamora. Mis- Misfits. It. This is a heist movie with with uh, Pierce Brosnan. I've never heard. I've never seen this movie. Pierce Brosnan, Tim Roth, Nick Cannon. Like what the fuck? I can. It's hilarious. <laughs> this is hilarious. This is on the opening paragraph of of uh, Wikipedia. The film was a box office bomb and received negative reviews. Like, are all wow. these Kurt Wimmer movies? Well, I think this movie's actually doing pretty well. So maybe, maybe not. Maybe they they all come around. I don't know. But anyway, guys, what happened in the Beekeeper, buddy? Well, okay. Um. So I feel like this is like a stupider version of the accountant, kind of like uh, you're introduced to uh, Jason Statham's character uh, who keeps bees like he's literally beekeeping. He's milking them for all their honey and piss. And uh, he lives on uh, Claire Huxtable's farm and they just hang out and things are good. Uh, And then – what will inevitably happen to my parents happens to Felicia Rashad. Where, I hope not. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't want it to happen neither. But no, I think uh, your parents are smart enough to to once the the fucking bank goes, is this fraud? You click the text and go, yes, it is. 
Like, well, what? your dad is so paranoid about everything. There is zero chance he would. No, but that. he's paranoid about stuff to the point where he goes full circle, and he'll be like, "Oh, they put a virus on my computer. I better do something about it." Like it's, it, 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 it might work. So he wouldn't, call, he wouldn't call you. He might, but if I couldn't pick up the phone, he might panic. Uh, like, it's crazy. I don't know if Alex run into this. Like, you'd think, like, oh, this is – nobody would fall for this. But then it's like when I was working for Target, people would come and be like, yeah, this uh, – Amazon called and said I need to get $500 worth of gift cards to pay my t- my uh, bill. Otherwise, oh, yeah. they're going to – like, this oh, shit really? happens all the time. Yeah. 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 People, oh, people would come up to, like, be like, yeah, the IRS said I have a tax debt overdue and I have to buy a th- oh, pay it with Visa gift Apple. cards. Yeah, like Apple so, cards. Yeah, like so I told the guy one time, I was like, go... sir, in your life, have you ever paid a bill with gift cards before? <laughs> like, well, no, but, they, you know, they're they're really serious. Were they all older people? Yeah. 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 Like, my grandma got called. My grandma got a phone call from somebody, and the, the dude picked up. She picked up the phone, and the guy said grandma, and then my grandma said Andrew, and that's all it took. And then this fella convinced my grandma that i was in prison in mexico this is not a, I mean, this is not i mean and then and she <laughs> needs to and god bless her she was like that's plausible and <laughs> they they said send this much money in wire transfers to wherever and she made one she made she made like one thing of like 1700 dollars and she moved some more money they were asking like 3500 bucks from her they caught thank the person at western union caught it on the second one was like hey ma'am who are you sending this to and why? And like, apparently me, other alternate universe, me was very emphatic about don't tell mom and dad, whatever. So like this, like this part pissed me off and normally being pissed off about the sort of thing. And then seeing like full blown, like over the top, unnecessary revenge would really get my gears going. But somehow this didn't anyway. Um, so Felicia Rashad gets scammed by the internet. And she gets scammed by, like, it's, it's like a neon cyberpunk demon runway showroom. This dude like, is, this dude is basically Jean Ralphio Saperstein. Yes. Like, he if he was Jean Ralphio, he was yeah. legit evil and not just an incompetent idiot. Like, they've got, they've got, like, the hacker screen on, like, a big screen and they're going through Felicia and he's, like, showing everyone how to sell and how to close the deal. And, like, Felicia Rashad's got, like, she's a retired teacher, and she's got her money, but she also manages, like, a $2 million fund for, like, some sort of charity. And they, they wipe it all out. They take it all out. And then poor Felicia Rashad is left. Uh, honestly, the best acting in the entire movie is Felicia Rashad going through these emotions of grief. It's and then the only takes, acting in the entire movie. the only movie. acting in the movie. <laughs> also, this, she shoots herself, like, I guess in the chest. Like, what the fuck? She, like, oh, no. It's well, that, that way. That. That. Was it in oh, the I thought it was in the chest too. Oh, yeah, I, I saw thought it was like blood trickling from her head after. Oh, you know, I, it looked like there was a big hole in her lapel. Yeah, I oh, thought, that's a yeah, weird way to kill yourself. That's what I thought it well, was. Well, maybe I she wanted to save her it. brain for CTE research. That's what you were saying. Killed himself. I thought so, she was going to uh, yeah. fucking Elliot Smith herself and like. What didn't what's her name? Um, she's gonna stab herself thirty times in the chest. Yeah, in the chest. So she so she kills herself, and then somehow her killing herself alerts the FBI and also the beekeeper because he was bringing her honey, and uh, then her FBI daughter shows up and just gives him a raft of shit, and then now the beekeeper is on the bee loose uh, to go undo <laughs> all the, all no, the injustices really of the world. So. The uh, second best tra- acting in this movie is done by uh, Jason Statham's beard dye because it is doing a lot of heavy lifting. Oh, yeah. That shit also, is so like, distracting. Is it just me or is like he's he, like he's not quite committed to doing like an accent, but he's not he's not talking normally. It's really weird. Like, no, it's a weird like grumble, but it's not yeah, British. It's, it's just right. like he's. I think he's trying to play like he's a little autistic. Like he's just sort of hanging it's out, a, it's keeping a bees. Definitely a performance. It is a choice. So yeah. he is. So then you find out that he's a retired beekeeper, and we protect the swarm or whatever he does. That's pretty good. That's and pretty good. He calls up like he calls up Central from fucking John Wick, and he's like, "I need you to give me a name on a TV show." And, and then they're like, "Central, go to this, 
We'll, we'll look up. We'll look up this guy using our Fallout computers. What? Why? <laughs> Right. Well, yeah. the, the, see, the reason you you, ha- you have one of those computers is it's like, oh, it's untraceable because it's old and doesn't uh, have the right, internet. You can't, you can't, however, we, however, because Kurt Wimmer is borderline mentally retarded, the computer <laughs> has to be connected to the internet because it downloads a bunch of shit. It's also well, how computers work and information works. Unless well, they've got every it. piece of information of all time on a tape drive. I thought like, about it as I watched it. I was like, well, that's also, like, the aesthetic choice. That's just ripping off John Wick, right? Because remember, correct. they had, like, a switchboard yeah. and, like, yeah. So, anyway, uh, old Wims is, like, sends him to some office park in Toledo, and they're like, all right, show up, and he comes with, like, two cans of gas and, like, kicks in the door, waving the 4-4. All you hear is Papa, don't shoot no more. Um, they... Goes in, kicks the dick out of everybody, lights the place on fire, commits arson, With blows the place hilariously, up. It's hilariously, it's hilarious to be two giant gas cans. <laughs> like he just walks yeah, well, he has a, But he's got like, it's like a loaves and fishes. Like he dumps way more gas out of those cans than should have been available. And he's dumping it on people. He's dumping yes. it on scammers. Like he's walking and he's like, tell me you never scam old folks again. And they're like, what the hell? No, he's like pouring gas on a dude's head. Oh, it's so awesome. We love scamming. We're the best. High five. We're all roller skating into the ball pit. Like, what the fuck is even going on? The black guy about it. I'll sell drugs to the community. Like, I, I love, too, that, like, I mean, we've talked about this in a million movies, but, like, Every t- anytime they show like computer shit in a movie, it's like the most un- like this fucking call this scam call center has like fucking animated graphics and like yeah yeah like, how every, number- like, their operating system is just DVD animated <laughs> menus like you know, is, I like it's, in it's the, insane. When the, later on it's at the second call center <laughs> like the mobile the video board is like a zoom screen of all the people getting scammed. At like once. watching live as they're getting scammed. <laughs> now, here's something I don't understand about the scam call center. At some point, the one scammer goes around the room and says, like, How are we doing today? He's like, Up 20K. And the other guy's like, Up 45. He's like, Down 96. Someone got reverse scammed. Someone lost 96. <laughs> yeah, how did they lose money? Or, or, or me, the only thing I can think of is that they're down 96 from comp, whatever the prior time period is. Maybe right. they made. 200 no, and then they're, they're considering like the year to date forecast. Yeah, it's, it, it's no, a why oh why. No, it seemed like it seemed like it was an active loss. Like it seemed like like we're out. Like somehow like the, this, the old people this old came lady up got tremendous. <laughs> well, you guys have a fully equipped Corvette out of the deal. Two sometimes you you get you you sometimes you get got, you know? So anyway, the beekeeper's a beekeeping. <laughs> uh and he zaps everybody and uh He's like, all right, well, that's enough of that. I'm going to go back to beekeeping. So then he goes back to his hives and such. And then the John Ralphio guy didn't learn his lesson. He calls uh, PETA from the Hunger Games, and he's like, hey, bro, uh, the the building exploded. He's like, well, go unexplode whoever. Jeremy Irons is my friend. And so then they And also a, possibly my dad. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Oh like, God! When the president's like, I still think of you. Like, what I'm the, so what horny the, for you, Jeremy Irons. You're such a good-looking kid. The CIA, the Jeremy God, Irons. Yeah, British CIA directors, which is the thing that definitely would happen. Yeah, that would have yeah, totally he, happened. He's from, he's from like uh, te- London, Texas. I guess. I yeah. don't. I don't think he's... His dad was in the Air Force. So anyway, the. Uh... So he goes back to beekeeping, and then John Ralphio and his hired <laughs> goons. Uh, Hired show dudes. up and they uh, shotgun blast all of the the apiary, uh, and then they show up into his uh, pleasure barn, and they just get systematically annihilated and like hung from the ceiling. Like he's he, just the, this movie shines in its violence. Like the, well, the, the violence, the, it needs more violence. I agree. I definitely like, agree. Like, but like I would like. like I didn't hate the movie, but if it was like balls to the wall, like the night comes for us and still had the same stupid plot, like this would be like a 10. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you can't yeah. put it in theaters if it's that violent, you know, no. but I agree. I definitely agree with you. But like Dude, the night, it was we, like we, the night comes the, for us. Like in the call uh, center, he's like bashing people in the throat with a phone. And like, I, I don't know. I thought that like the fighting, I actually thought the fighting was done really well. Like I, thought, yeah. I, I almost wish Wimmer had directed this movie too. Cause I think, I think he's a good like fight choreographer. I think the fights in ultraviolet are fun. 
Obviously, yeah. we like the shit in Equilibrium. I like. I don't know why that. David Ayer needed to direct this movie. You know what I'm saying? Also, yeah, and David Ayer did a lot of, like, weird... Like, there's a lot of, like, weird ramping in this movie, but, like, in parts that don't need to be... Ramp- like, I, it's very odd. Like, he did, he did some stuff towards the end that he didn't do in the rest of the movie that was like... I thought my file was fucked up. I was like, what is that? But I was like, nope, that's just how it is. Like, okay. So, so, the, so the beekeeper... Also, keeps... by the way, this is the best David Ayer movie. Not Fury? <laughs> yeah, fuck Fury. Okay. No, this Fair is enough. better. Um, I don't so know. Then... I have to rewatch Fury. I remember Fury kind of falling apart in the end. I don't remember. I remember liking most of it. So now, uh, so the beekeeper is just ending, ending dudes... Uh, and then he gets John Ralphio, cuts his fingers off with, like, a bandsaw or some such. And then he does, like, I'll be honest with you. I, I, I thought he stole an idea that I've never shared with anyone on how to kill somebody in a movie. Oh, shit. Like, he, get, he came very close. So he, he hooked dude up to, he hooked dude up to a secret assassination technique. <laughs> so listen, tell me, okay, I'm just going to put it on front streaks. They almost did. How, how intimidating would this be in a film situation if you're sitting in the bed of a truck right and you've got like like a piece of like steel cable around your neck right there's a whole bunch of cable sitting in the truck with you but the cable was also like looped up over like like a highway sign back here and then the truck just takes off and you see watch it just all unfurl and then all of a sudden it snaps there you go this was very similar he almost did this to this guy the the dummy, you know me, you know TJ pops huge whenever there's a big dummy that falls off something. The dummy that, that his corpse as it flies off of the bridge, hilarious. Yeah, this <laughs> this truck gets like yeet. This guy gets like ratchet strapped off into like I guess it's a a broken bridge. I forget, I don't even know where he found this. It's like a drawbridge, isn't it? Was that what it was? He just sends was, this dude. Yeah. Anyway, the yeah, FBI's I think on it was his a tail. Drawbridge that was up. Yeah, it was up. Yeah. So, so then Jeremy Irons is like, you need to send out another beekeeper to take care of the beekeeper. And they're like, okay. And then you find out about the beekeeper mythos, which is like, like a super secret, they're like super special forces. Basically. They're like, yeah, like they're like the, but, but they're, they're like, they're like the Knights Templar in they're, Assassin's they're, Creed. They're, they're like an assassin like, guild that like works independently of the government, but they work, they work outside of the system to preserve the system. Yeah, right. what the fuck? <laughs> they're just trimming the edges of the place. It like, it makes just... zero sense. No, it makes absolutely no sense. It, and right, I told you, like... it's like this. It's like this secret uh, agency that nobody knows anything about, but everybody is incredibly well informed about them. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, like, yeah, at the exactly. same time, like you would think that this would be have to be cared because it seems like they're able to. They they operate without oversight, and they can do whatever they want. Well, so okay, well there's like a council like, of beekeepers, I guess, because it's like they've decided to stay neutral. They're like the uh, – what's the thing yeah. in 100 Bullets, that crime family oh, yeah, that yeah, gives yeah, out the yeah, guns, yeah. the 12 or whatever? Out, it gives out the, the 100 Bullets, yeah. But, like, yeah, but, I, but, but, but it's like good, you don't know what power. their function – like what is their function? Like, But at the same yeah. time – so like so Statham is a retired beekeeper who is actually a beekeeper, and he has a book about beekeeping, which the FBI finds. Also, that but then he is kind the, of funny in general, like – you're in this super clandestine group that's called the beekeeper, so you choose to become an actual He's beekeeper. not very creative. He's yeah. just like, you know what, go with what you know. Um, but then you, you're like, okay, you're given carte blanche to basically do whatever you want to maintain order, right? Like, But at the same time, you take orders from someone, but at the same time, you would think that these people would have to be like very big picture, very slow to anger, very kind of even keel. And then the second beekeeper you meet is a full-blown Mad Max lunatic with, like, a minigun mounted in the back of her Tacoma. Like This is, like, the biggest disappointment in the movie because now yeah. I want 30 other beekeepers for him to have to fight through. So You want it to this, be, like, a Bourne movie. Yeah, yeah. like, no more heroes. Yes, yeah. or, or if you've ever seen the Japanese film Tokyo Drifter or Youth of the Beast, like that. Like, I was hoping that he was going to fight, like, a hierarchy of beekeepers. Well, that is like, asking for a John Wick film, yeah. It's the same each thing, more right? eccentric than the last. And, <laughs> you know, you don't get that. Like, I want yeah. I want goofy-ass, I want beekeepers that got, like, like it, umbrellas for weapons and just, like, weird shit. A trillion shit. percent, it's the fucking, why are you going to show it to me if I can't have it? You know what I mean? Like, are, I guess maybe they're franchise building, but, like, also... Just, 
Thank God, sorry. sorry. No, I was just going to say, get rid of the weird South African merc who also works for the government or whatever the fuck. Like, and, yeah. like who's got jurisdiction? Is it black? Boy, that guy, like... yeah. Was he South African or was he a Kiwi? The guy with the one leg later. Lazarus. Yeah. What a great Anyway. Uh, but, but yeah. That that fight, that's a like... good fight, though. That fight scene. Yeah. Fight All the fights great. are good. Fights are really good. The fights keep you entertained. But the thing is, like Gogs was saying, that this woman is supposed to be like again, like Jason Jason Statham, like one of the most highly skilled killers ever. And again, in this super secret way, and her tactics are bringing a mini gun to a gas. She station. goes loud. She blows up a Wawa just to try and get this guy taken out. Like, like uh, it is and, out of and, pocket. And his thing is lighting everybody on fire, apparently. Right. Yeah. right. Lights her on fire. Too. Oh my god! When he, can't, when he lights her on fire and it just lets her like cook, just... yeah, let, let her, her cook. cook. Let her <laughs> cook. It's, it's uh, it's not. Cook. I do appreciate their commitment to having a good old man on woman beating. You don't get that a whole lot anymore, is, besides John very, Wick. No, it's, it's very, very progressive, very woke. Um. So anywho, uh, after that happens, then the beekeepers like. We're good, fam. We're staying out of this thing. So now you got to rely on your own squad of mercenaries. So then PETA is just trying to hire more blokes to go after the beekeeper. And the beekeeper is working his way up the chain, and he figures out what call center is what. And then he goes to a new call center uh, and kicks the Christ out of that old guy. And that guy is super familiar. I don't know what from, but I didn't bother looking it up. But the new John Ralphio is like an old man, and he's – just a real piece of shit. And those guys all get fucked up too. And then there's a tactical mercenary wing to whatever the super call center group's name is. And then it's all, well, it's, it's also just, one of those, like, is it an accent or is it a speech impediment? Like who knows? Yeah. So it's just we fights. Haven't, we haven't really the, talked much enough about the president's uh, son. Well, no, we're getting there. So now you find out that he, he loves cocaine. Little, yeah, this little whiny bitch is like it's uh it's what's his name from the Hunger Games? I, I, Josh Hutcherson is that his name? Hutchinson, I think is Hutchinson. his name. He's yeah. literally been saying that the whole time. I have uh, been, but that's fine. Basement. Um, so then you find out that uh oh, this is the president's son, and oh, the president's a woman, so that's fun. Um, but also you find out that the president's not in on it. Like you would think that the president would kind of be yourself as like a super criminal and like. Your ex-lover, ex-CIA agent, Bo, kind of is well aware of what he's doing. And then it all kind of unfolds with a mansion fight where Josh Hutchinson's going to blow his mom's head off. <laughs> um, <laughs> Here we go. Wait, did anyone else hear TJ? TJ broke up on my end. Yeah, um, he cut off. Oh no! What was, really? What was the party really? said? I, I I forget uh, what the line was. Can you still was. hear me? I don't even. I can oh, hear you now. Me. That was yeah, drop it again. Uh, we didn't say. He uh he literally goes goodbye, mom, right before Jason <laughs> Statham shoots him, which is like the funniest goddamn line. He's like, but well, still, it, it still works. Yeah, oh, yeah. It's the it's like my favorite line in the whole movie. It's like goodbye, mom. <laughs> Every one-liner is so insane. Like, it was written by, like, the worst chatbot because it doesn't, like, it's, they're not, like, contextual. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Like, it's like you hit the wrong button on the dialogue wheel. Also, also, <laughs> like, and and they don't really, like, it, like, Jeremy Irons goes into this, but obviously Jason, Jason Statham doesn't say much through the whole movie. But, like, ultimately Statham's plan is to kill the president because... Like, sometimes you have to kill the queen for some reason. Yeah. Because like, he's a queen because, slayer, like Jamie Lannister. That's right, right. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm making, like, stop. I mean, not for nothing. Like, I don't know a whole lot about beekeeping, but the queen seems pretty integral to keeping said bees. Like, so how many queens is he out slaying? I, I don't know. I, like, I, a lot, I, do a lot of, like, do a lot don't of... Know, you don't know much about beekeeping. I know literally nothing. Like, the bees like, have the cognitive of... faculty to be like, this kid's got problems. We should kill its mother. Like, is is that how like, bees like, work? Like, a lot of bee queens go yeah. rogue? Yeah, I don't want to look it up, because yeah. I don't really want to know the answer. Like, I want to just <laughs> roll with that. You're just afraid you'll find another hobby. Yeah, right. <laughs> start bee, you'll start beekeeping so now. I'm going to start beekeeping. It yeah. should be yeah, like a bee killer, I'm... honestly. Because this is delicious, honey. Mm. Oh yeah, honey's rocks. Big well, anyway, shout out to honey. 
the 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 president's son gets gets murked, and then Jason Statham just like sends it through a window. That shit is so hilarious. It's so good, yeah. He just leaves. And I, I now I you got to decide: down. do you work for justice or do you work for the law? Well, right, yeah, clearly, I work for the law. I'm in the FBI. He, like, he puts on like a gimp suit and swims to England. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, that's the beekeeper. Like, it is the stupidest movie with some great fight. It is like, it is impossibly so stupid. stupid. <laughs> like, it is the, it, is it might be the, the dumbest movie we've ever watched. It's so dumb, but like, it's, it's like charmingly stupid. Like, it's never yeah. boring. Yeah, like, it's like a golden retriever. And, and all the choices are just so fucking funny. Like, I, I just, I, I, I loved it. Uh, Alec, like, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, Alec, was your favorite part of this movie the beekeeping? Um, it was the bees. Period. The bees themselves. Yeah. <laughs> I, they they I didn't know. over. They didn't overstay their welcome. They that left real. They left relatively was, early. And there was a part where Jason Statham was actually harvesting honey, which I thought was pretty funny. Like, like yeah. I felt bad for them. They all got shot down to shit for no reason. <laughs> Poor bees, yeah. I they was kind of hoping he'd have more bee-based attacks. Like, he would throw oh, bees on the people. Oh, he should have. Yeah. He should have bee power. Yeah. Yeah. Like, 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 he, like, he takes a bunch of bees to his fist. And he oh, wow. Them. Like, yeah. he just paints, like, yellow and black stripes on his vest. Yeah, like shit like that. Like he gets an ant trail going with a bunch of like, honey. How, like, like how much better like like seventies exploitation if he's just wearing the full on beekeeper outfit the whole time, like with the, the fucking time. screen mesh and shit. Wasn't there yeah. wasn't there a tag team in the eighties, Sean, that were like the bees? Like the, the killer, killer bees. bees, yeah. It was the Brian bees. Blair and I forget what the other guy's name is. Like he could have had their like their their trunks. Like he like rips off his pants and he's like oh, he, Brian Blair, that's the, the Iron Sheet guy. He's like, Fuck Brian Blair. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this yeah. the movie though. This so this movie had a budget of forty million. That seems that cheap, better. and yeah. so far has made one hundred and forty-four million it's a hit. worldwide. It's a hit. It does. It does feel cynically like let's make a John Wick movie, but not know how to make movies like at all. No. no. So, <laughs> and a, 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 apparently, <laughs> this, this movie was uh, the rights were bought by Amazon and they were going to dump it on streaming like last fall. Then they realized there's no action movies this winter. So they're like, fuck it. Let's just release it in the theaters. Smart. And Good call. Made a buttload of money. Yeah. I mean, like the, the two FBI agents are so bad. Their banter is like beyond like, mid. Like, dude, I don't know. I think it's like, funny. The, the one, the one, the male one, he's just like, so over it like every time she presents him with a b fact he's like i don't i don't care anymore i just don't want to know yeah it was it, well, it's another like, one of, it's uh, another of my favorite uh let's read a wikipedia article in a movie type yeah. deals yeah. also the the, the you daughter, have a blank checkbook get it done i thought it was <laughs> hilarious when they they arrest jason statham at first because like you know, she, they're just like, they, they won't, he, he doesn't say anything, like, ever, and then they're finally like, well, let him go, and she's like, let him go, like, and the whole thing was just so, like, we just have to get this over with, like, we don't like really want to. Re- I like when they up. show, he shows up to the building in Boston, and the FBI is, like, guarding the outside, he just, like, walks up to him. Oh, like, yeah, hey, guys, yeah. what's up? They yeah. show up so and like, they're, gonna, they're specifically to, to stop him. Like, yeah. that's what yeah. they're there for. They have seen pictures of him. And then he's, like, he's Agent like, nah. 47 at the party. Yeah, the guy's, yeah. the one guy's like, is there a back door we need to cover? He walks up. He's like, no, there's no back door. Just the front one. I'm going in this yeah. way. I'm and Jason he Statham. To I'm just the kill all, all, or it doesn't kill them all, but he, like, beats the fuck out of all the FBI. He disables the fuck and out of them. Then you the have fight, that, that, been, this fight where he kills all the mercenaries is that was awesome. tremendous. Yeah. Dude, the part the, where ele- he, the elevator. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. He yeah. tethers that guy to the elevator, and then just like the one guy gets like ripped in half. That shit was awesome. Yeah, but you got split. Like uh, the that one guy, the... the guy that was like the head mercenary. That guy was cool. The fight like, in that hallway with the mirrors and the knife and all that. that and was he like dope. hits him with the fire extinguisher. That shit was cool. Like again, like the fight scenes are cool in this movie. Like it's fun. <laughs> It's like with, with less shit. less fight scenes, this movie sucks ass. But like with the fight scenes, the, the it's, terrible it's, it's plot. It's like 
like a really good like late PS2 budget game. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean, like a spy fiction or something. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah. Shit, I hope they. I hope he gets a franchise out of this. I, I hope so too. But I thought you were gonna say. I thought you were gonna say that Amazon was gonna option it into a show. Oh, I. I mean, well, I hope not. that would be bad. I'd rather see more stupid movies like this. Yeah, like I, I mean, love Jason Statham, much, but like he's really bad in this movie. <laughs> like besides the fighting, that's cool. Like I don't want Jason, to bad about that. Jason Statham is bad in most things that he's the star in. Fair. Yeah. He's it's, much it's, better it's, as like a side character, like in like a spy, and, like the Expendables yeah. movies. He's much better in smaller doses. Doesn't he's like, like, trying yeah. to figure out this movie with him for years, though. Like, it's like oh, yeah. the transporter, and then, like, let's just the remake of the mechanic, and then it's like, what? It, we keep trying, We know we can do this thing with him, but we just can't figure it out for some reason. I mean, Maybe it's because I mean, of the best. I feel like he's been in these movies for, like, 20 years. Snatch. It's Snatch, and he doesn't throw a punch in that movie. No, yeah. he's really good in that movie, but that movie is like, really movie. good. It, like, yeah, you know, that's really like very... In, uh, crank. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Crank oh, was, yeah. Crank, both Crank. So is Crank, too. Yeah. Yeah, I'll we'll suffer no Crank, crank slander. Oh, it's oh, awesome. Crank 2, oh, crank two high show. voltage? Oh, yeah, it's, it's everything you love about the first one, but dumber and faster. Yeah, like, and the one, the one oh, like, I love Crank. Well, I think I saw that in the theater with Scott. Oh, you'll love, you'll like, love, yes, you did see it in the isn't the antagonist of Crank 2 just like a like a Ted Williams head in the box for most of the film? It's the guy from the first one. But he yeah. fell from a helicopter, so they had to figure out how to keep him alive. So he's like, they uh, shot part like, of that movie on rollerblades. Like the directors shot it on rollerblades. And Crank Crank Two, you get the you get the uh, the, the monster fight. movie fight scene in the middle. Yeah, the right? kaiju, kaiju thing. Yeah, the kaiju yeah. thing. Yeah, that movie that yeah. rules. Rules. It's so, <laughs> it's so fucking good. That movie's so fucking dumb. <laughs> All right. Anything else before we get into uh, Five and Knuckle Shuffle? No, yeah, I'm glad yeah. Felicia Rashad's having a late kind of resurgence and being yeah. in like some movies, dying, dying, and everything. Die, dying, dying. Is she still alive? For some reason, I thought she yeah. passed away. When I watched yeah. it, I was like, "Was this her last role?" I don't know. It why. was an AI. Oh, probably. She was. Hmm. What's her What's her name in Creed? Um, I mean, last name's Creed. Well, Mrs. Creed. Creed. <laughs> Mrs. Her first name is Mrs. <laughs> Uh, all right, five knuckle shuffle time. Birthday boy, out. Shit, like I can't bring myself to give it a ten. But this movie's a nine. It's like a fucking blast. Ow. It's a nine. Yeah, hell yeah. Like it's ridiculous. It's insane. And I know by no stretch is it good, but it is so much fun. Yeah, I don't disagree. Like this is, I feel like the like the account is obviously a much better movie. But well, this is the same kind of movie where, like, yeah. if I still well, had, like, is... TBS or TNT and was scrolling through and this was on, I'd be like, oh, I could watch this for a while. Oh, it, it's I'd definitely a movie for guys who like movies. Oh, yeah, movies for guys who like movies. And then next thing I know, it'll be over. I'd be like, oh, I just wasted, like, two hours on The Beekeeper for the second time. <laughs> Why did I do that? Mm. But, yeah, oh, this yeah. movie fucking rocks. Jason Statham rocks in it. He says, like, 15 words the whole movie. Um mm-hmm. The lead FBI agent, the lady, is the girl from uh, Umbrella Academy. Uh, I, I like but her. But she really like hasn't her. done, I haven't seen her in anything else that I can think of, except for the Umbrella Academy and this. I like um, her in this. I thought she was pretty good. Yeah, I thought she was good. I thought it was except pretty good. The, the very, <laughs> what was the very last line of the movie? I can't even uh, remember. The, it was like, like, ser- it's the do you serve justice or do you serve liberty or whatever the, the law. And then the it's Godspeed Adam Clay. <laughs> like, that's the, this, yeah, it's this something like, like, like that. Yeah, this might be the best like cut to black ever. He's like diving into the water, just like credits. <laughs> like um, Sean said he's swimming to England. <laughs> yeah. Um You gotta go kill the actual queen. <laughs> shit. This movie's a blast. John Hutcherson, his mileage may vary on most things for me. Like he's sometimes I like him, sometimes I don't. I thought he was really good in this. It's just the, like dweeby scumbag, like just tech. Oh, he's really yeah, leaning but, into it. Yeah, he's great in that. Yeah. On the top metal part and his feet. Future Mike, um, ding dong. <laughs> Find it. 
Yeah, so it's a nine. TJ. Uh, is, is Van okay? I love that kid. Is he all right? Hey, he's fine. He's, he's, he's okay. He's got a boo-boo. He's okay. I'll tell him that uh, I'll come after. I'll beat up whoever got after him. I'll kick his. You beat up my stairs. That's what you yes. Yes. <laughs> well, fuck that. He's a standball stair puncher. <laughs> we probably have a lukewarm uh, relationship with my stairs anyway, so that's fine. That is very true. Um, <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a frosty relationship. Uh, no, I, coming. I fucking uh, enjoyed the hell out of this movie. Again, I wish I watched it with you boys because it would probably get a, a bump. A, another point bump, but to me, this is like an eight. I, I loved it. I thought it was hilarious. I I thought that the plot was so stupid it turned into like an unintentional comedy, and then I thought that the action sequences were done so well it actually compelled, it, it turned it into more than just like a so bad it's good movie. Like, I actually thought I was surprised at how competent, because I I mean, throughout the show, we've talked. I I don't think David Ayer is a very good director, but maybe he just that is correct. Maybe just action is his thing. He's never really done a like a martial arts based action movie. I thought the action sequences were done really well. Like, I don't know. He made the Suicide Squad, and that is an action movie of sorts. Of sorts, <laughs> but but like I not felt karate like, based though. I felt like all the in karate movies, like I feel like the the thing that always. I mean, we've watched a lot of bad karate movies too. But it's it's the weight of like punches and stuff that don't feel yeah. like they let like this actually had like good good weight good movement. Oh, he like, kicks Lady Beekeeper like through her spine into that truck. Yeah. Oh, and like oh, the, that, whoever that scene, stuff was about, that took that. Oh my god. Yeah. I forgot all about the scene where he's at the second call center interrogating the guy and just smacking him with the stapler. Just that was yeah. awesome. staples that was so into his hands and face over and over. Yeah, that shit was awesome. But uh, I don't know, man. I know it's, again, it, it is insanely stupid. But, like, it's a lot of fun. Like, this is the kind of stupid I could take more of. Like, it's it's stupid, it's not boring, and it's so stupid that it's, like... Stupid like a fox. It, it is so absurd. Like, again, like, the call center thing I couldn't get over. I was like, who thinks this is what a call center is like and not, you know... I don't know if any of you guys watch this. There's this YouTube channel that's like the British the guy. Scammers. Yeah. And it's, yeah, I can't, yeah. it's addictive to watch, but like he actually like Google maps, these call centers and they're just these like shitty offices in like, you know, they're, in India. they're not in Boston. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like yeah. it must be impossible to make a fucking phone call. I don't know how anything does. Cause they're all like all the fucking rock music playing dance dance revolution. And everybody's right. screaming every five seconds. <laughs> yeah. Like, so so much the, neon. The, it was like what also Foot like, was trying to recruit teenagers, but also a call the center. Thing, the thing that I didn't understand too is that like in so in the first call center that you had the John Raffio guy, he like was like actively taking calls, but he's the manager. Like I was like, wait, what? Like that was kind well, of Well they were they were different company names, so they might have had different corporate structures. Mm. Oh, I guess. I don't know. It just seemed like it seemed like they wanted to use that guy and like but like the second guy was like the manager and it's like I don't know. I, I, I took the first guy as he was like, Let me show you how it's done. Like, uh, yeah, I guess. But anyway, I I, I, on these hoes. I I love this movie. I thought it was hilarious. Uh, it's an eight for me, dog. Uh, who down down ninety three thousand. Uh yeah, da- <laughs> this old woman played me. You uh got me. Sean. Uh, it's like a seven for me. Like, yeah. like, I mean, it's, it's impossible not to enjoy, like, it's compelling in ways that I, I can't readily identify. Like, I love the violence right. and stuff. That's but a good like, way to put it. <laughs> um, it's like, uh, it, it feels like if this movie was like English as a second language or it was from the seventies, I would like really love it. But like, it, right. it, I don't, you know, it's just, it's, awkward enough but not for any reason that i can understand other than like everybody involved in it is dumber than fuck you know what i mean like there's nothing right. it's not like it's a kashi meat it's not like a um, sukiyaki western django you know what i'm saying where it's right. like right. it's charming because like nobody really understands what's going on like yeah, i don't understand what's going this on isn't because an, this isn't like an intentional parody at all no. this is this is yeah the, like kurt wimmer thinks this is like the most badass thing ever <laughs> like yeah but yeah, I mean it's a lot of fun. Like I, I enjoyed it for reasons. <laughs> yeah. Uh Gox. Uh, it's it's a seven also. Uh it's 
If the if the if the fighting if the fight scenes weren't as good as they were, it's a three Agreed. or less. It's just absolute trash. But like it, the fights are so much fun and they're so over the top. And then just the whole conceit at the end that like the pre of all people, it's the president's son at the top of this thing. And then she just like, wants to be president so she can have parties. Yeah, like, it's so bananas. Like, this, it's, like, written by someone who has a loose understanding of anything. Like, there's just, there's no logic to this movie, and it's, that's, also, that's kind of fun. Like the president's like, I'll stop the, the beekeeper, because I'm just going to come clean, and it's just like, okay, like, what? Like, all right. Yeah, but, but yeah, what she did, so wait, I guess, did she know, but she didn't know her son was doing this, right? I, she, I don't know. Like, also, like, you find him out down in the river. last minute and then be like, well, I don't I think guess the movie we're... knows. Yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah. <laughs> but it's, I don't, you know, I don't think she dumb. knew her son, I forget how they said it, I don't think she knew her son was doing it, because she was like, he was like, I funded your whatever. Right, but how could she oh, not right. know? And he was like, and she was like, no, we funded it with the legitimate business that it started <laughs> as, or whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah, he was like, oh, yeah. It's, it's so dumb, good. but it's Also, sad. I, I want to talk to whoever, uh, Josh Hutchison, whoever did the wardrobe, because I want to dress like that all the time, like a super sleazy, like, you can pull it off. I, you, you oh, it was start. awesome with the big collar start. shirts. And, you just gotta yeah. start. Yeah. You gotta get your uh, tips frosted. Hell yeah. That's the I easiest thing. Like, that doesn't even cost that much compared to the outfits. I, feel it. I think I could pull that off. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, this is a great movie. <laughs> Where's the criteria on Blu-ray? Put it out. Uh, all right. So what's we're still in uh, February, Gary. So let's see. Uh, it's Sean, right? Because everybody else yeah. got a pick. Oh, you shit. You got a, a, a Gary movie? Um, unless, right. just keep in mind, it's a Gary movie unless Madam Web becomes available. That is Madam yes. Web. Yes, correct. Stand by, vamp, vamp for a second. Vamp, uh, hey, I just actually, this is a good time to bring it up because I didn't know this existed, but I was at uh, uh, Soundgarden the other day, and they have a pretty extensive uh, Blu-ray section still, one of the few places. There is a Arrow two-disc Blu-ray set. I think it's a Blu-ray and a 4K of the Warriors, and it's the theatrical oh. cut without the stupid comic book transitions. So it was like forty bucks, but I mean, like, I think, like, I I've, I've been waiting for like a good version of that movie without the dumb comic book transitions for a while. Oh, I got to pick, and, it, and it's Arrow, so like, there's plenty of stuff. You know, they have, they're like right there on. They've oh, got a lot of great stuff. stuff. Oh, Arrow is fantastic. Uh, okay, Sean. Uh, Gary Busey is in this, so I can pick it. It's a uh, Kurt Russell Soldier, a movie I feel like we've talked about more than once. Oh, oh boy. hell yeah! Oh, that'll be fun. I haven't seen that movie. What does that like, does that a shared universe movie with something? Blade Runner. Blade Runner. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Neat. Awesome. Oh, I didn't know Gary Busey was in that movie. I don't know oh. if he's in a ton of it, but the rules oh, say he just has yeah, to be fine. in it. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. That's gonna All be right. interesting. I haven't seen that movie in ages. It has an eighteen percent of Rotten Tomatoes BT. No, I feel like that's gonna be a movie we like, even despite the Rotten Tomatoes score. But anyway, we'll find out. So next week, Soldier, very exciting. Uh, I will put that on the Plex because I guarantee that is not available anywhere. Uh, all right, that's the show, everybody. Uh, happy birthday, Alec. I know it's it's late. Thank you. Happy show, birthday, Alec. Show parlance. It's Thank you. <laughs> oh, it was but, also uh, directed by Paul W.S. Anderson. I didn't know that. Oh, no, really? I didn't know that either. Yeah, well, it's Michael, it's, Michael Chiklis in it. Is it going to be Event Horizon, Commish. Mortal Kombat, or Resident Evil? So. Stay tuned. Or, or Magnolia. Oh, wait. Different guy. Uh, all right, everybody. That's the oh, show. Oh, wow. Wy- Wyatt Russell is in it. It must be him as a kid or something. He's been a baby. Oh. Because <laughs> he, he's, he, he's pretty young, isn't he? He's like in his 30s. I think he's our age or a little younger. I think he's a little younger than us. He's, he's born, in age. Age. born in 86, so cool. five he's years younger than us. He's older than I expected. He's pretty good. I he was I watched that awful Night Swim movie and he was in it. And but it, I mean it was terrible. But it's not his fault. I liked his zombie Nazi movie. I thought that was a lot of fun. Oh, you Overlord love that movie. Yeah, you're like the only person I know that's seen that movie. Maybe I should watch it. Um. Anyway, he's good in that one episode of Black Mirror where it's like a. Oh, it's great. 
like the VR thing. I thought that was hell yeah. Episode. That's like one of the last good episodes of that show. All right, anyway, bye everybody. Bye bye. Baby. Good night.